Hi, I'm your Minna Van Dyken, MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain optimum health. In recent videos, we've talked about nitric oxide and how to get more of it from leafy greens and from other strategies like nasal breathing. I've gotten many questions about nitric oxide, nitrates, and cancer. Enough questions that I've decided to address this topic in the video today. I know, it can get confusing when delineating nitrates from vegetables compared to nitrates in meat and why is one considered good and the other considered bad. Let's take a deep dive into the research on this. Before we start though, let's quickly review nitrates, nitrites, and their relationship to nitric oxide. For more details though, please check out these other videos I've made on the topic. They're linked below. In these videos, I really examine the scientific details behind all of that. But in summary, vegetables contain a chemical called nitrate. Once ingested, this nitrate is converted to nitrite, then to nitric oxide. Once produced, nitric oxide has a half-life of about one second, and it's quickly oxidized to nitrite and nitrate, or it reacts with thiols and amines. Interestingly, about 50% of nitrates that are circulating in our blood are produced endogenously or by our own body. Studies have shown that steady state levels of plasma nitrate and nitrite can be affected by diet, and this directly reflects endogenous nitric oxide production. High levels of nitric oxide have been shown to have health benefits, most notably a decrease in cardiovascular or heart disease risk and progression. Very notably, over 30 randomized controlled clinical trials have examined the benefits of dietary nitrate on blood pressure and vascular function, and they've established cardioprotective benefits. Here's where things get sticky though. Nitrate and nitrite have been used for centuries in curing and preserving meats and fish and in manufacturing certain cheeses. When added to foods, nitrate has three functions. Number one, it contributes to the flavor because it stops things from becoming rancid. Number two, it reacts with myoglobin to create a chemical called mononitrosyl hemochrome. This is what gives the meat the characteristic bright pinkish red color that we see with preserved meats. Number three, it inhibits the growth of bacteria that could spoil the food. Bacteria like Clostridium botulinum, which can form a lethal neurotoxin and cause botulism. So all in all, nitrates seem to do a good thing when used to preserve meats, fish, and cheese. Here's the issue though. Nitrate and nitrite have the potential to form a chemical called N-nitrosamines or N-nitroso compounds. So what happens is when nitrates are consumed in the presence of amines, which are typically things that come from meat, they're converted to these N-nitroso compounds. This research is so concerning that the International Agency for Research on Carcinogenicity determined that, quote, ingested nitrate or nitrite under conditions that result in endogenous nitrosation is probably carcinogenic to humans, end quote. Since the 1980s, there's been numerous reports on the association of N-nitrosamines and certain human cancers. To complicate things even more, there was a research paper written that described increased association with colorectal cancer in patients who consume nitrate from red meat without sufficient vitamin C intake. So we're finding that the cancer-causing ability of N-nitrosamines is inhibited in the presence of antioxidant compounds like polyphenols, vitamin C, and vitamin E, which are found in, you guessed it, vegetables. So, Back to meat preservation with nitrates. There was significant concern raised about using synthetic nitrates in meat preservation because of the concern for cancer. Some companies changed their tactic using, wait for it, celery powder to preserve the meat instead of the synthetic nitrates and nitrites. This allowed them to label their products natural and nitrate free, which is pretty misleading. And I'll tell you why. Celery powder is super rich in nitrates. Basically, it's an organically sourced nitrate. It does the same exact thing when it comes to meat preservation. It also does the same exact thing when combined with amines. It forms N-nitroso amines, those cancer-forming compounds. Yikes. So kudos to them for good marketing, but it's a bit scary. The nitrate-free bacon at the store has not been shown to be any safer than the traditional bacon. We're sitting here talking about nitrates and meat, but really the vast majority of dietary nitrates comes from vegetables. One study estimated that about 80 to 85% of total nitrate 
comes from things like arugula, beetroot, lettuce, and spinach. And honestly, a nitrate molecule is a nitrate molecule, whether it comes from celery or leafy green vegetables or is synthetic. So how is nitrate from vegetables thought to be good for you and nitrate processed meat bad then? Again, it's a result of the other things that come along in the whole food, in that package. The vegetables have antioxidants like polyphenols and vitamin C along with the nitrates. These antioxidants inhibit and nitrosoamine formation. Nitrates and nitrites have so many proven benefits in humans. Here's the most studied. Lower blood pressure, improved vascular function, lower inflammation, improved exercise capacity, improved mitochondrial function, lower triglycerides, less heart attacks, and less strokes. Yes, a small amount of N-nitrosamine may form every time we eat nitrates, but at the end of the day, the benefits far outweigh the risks. Okay, so now that we've established that we want nitrates and all the other phytochemicals, fiber, and vitamins that come in the neat little package vegetables have to offer, Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about nitrates from vegetables. Which vegetables have the highest nitrate concentrations? The answer to this is actually quite complicated. There's quite a few factors that determine nitrate concentrations. The concentration and amount of nitrate in plants will depend on the type of vegetable, its temperature, growth rate, sunlight exposure, soil moisture content, and natural nitrogen content in the soil. Here are some examples of other factors that could alter nitrate concentrations. Organic versus conventionally grown. Organic vegetables tend to have significantly lower nitrate concentrations compared to conventionally grown vegetables. This makes sense because conventionally grown produce tends to use nitrogen-based fertilizers, which increases nitrates. The time of year grown is another factor. One study showed that lettuce grown in the summer had lower nitrates compared to lettuce grown in the winter. Another factor is preparation methods. Some preparation methods have been shown to reduce nitrate levels. Things like peeling, removal of the stem and midribs of greens, boiling or blanching, or freezing. Did you know that nitrate content is the highest in the skin and just below the skin of vegetables like beets and potatoes? So peeling can make a big difference. Storing your vegetables at room temperature is another factor. The vegetable that is number one clear winner overall is Chinese flat cabbage. We don't commonly see that in the grocery store though. <laughs> number two is much more easily acquired, arugula or rocket. Then after that, we've got other greens like false pak choy, corn salad, mustard greens, and Swiss chard. The lowest vegetable, bet you'll never guess it, corn. Wah, wah. <laughs> So, looking at this chart in more detail, the highest green leafy was Chinese flat cabbage. The highest stem vegetable was celery. The highest root vegetables were beet, radish, and rutabaga. Of the herbs and spices, cilantro and basil. Well, that about wraps it up for today's discussion. I hope you found this information useful and practical. Links to the references used in this video are in the description below. Let me know how you get your nitrates and how you get your nitric oxide. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so please comment below with your thoughts on the video and any questions you may have regarding the information provided. Keep it civil though. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy and aloha.